Okay, Assalamualaikum. Very good afternoon everyone. Okay. Hmm. So let's begin our class with Umur Kitab Al-Fatihah. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, today I will continue from uh, last week's lecture. Okay, let me share my screen first. Okay, <clears throat> so last week, uh, maybe we should, we can recap a, on a, in a short while. Okay, last week we actually... We were discussing on the predicting the molecular geometry. Okay, I hope uh, you have already at least get familiar what is the electron what is the difference between electron geometry and molecular geometry, and then um, know how to draw the geometry and also the bond angle. What is actually uh, why uh, when you have a lone pair. Long press, okay. So why why the angle will become different? It's due to the repulsion between long press and bonding pairs, okay. So I hope you that get familiar eh, on how to draw and also the angle, okay. Kita pun dah discuss on this uh, checkpoint, right? Okay. So now uh, we are moving to the. <clears throat> The new subtopic, which is polarity of the molecules. So, okay. Boleh nampak eh, saya punya slide eh. <coughs> okay. So, um, uh, for this subtopic, polarity, okay. So, at the end of this uh, subtopic, you should be able to classify a bond as being a non-polar, polar or ionic based on the differences in the electron negativity. Meaning that, let's say if you have A and B, uh, so, ni ada bond dia kan? So, we want to know whether this bond is actually polar or non-polar or even it's, whether it's ionic by using the differences in the electronegativity. Okay? And then, you uh, uh, at the end of this uh, uh, subtopic also, you should be able to explain a molecule whether it's polar or non-polar. Okay? Remember, uh, kalau yang ni the very basic A and B, for example, chlorine and chlorine. You only have one bond. But you have more than that, right? The maximum bond you can have is six octahedral, right? Num. So, uh, from that also, even though um, you first, of, uh, of course, you need to determine the bond polarity. After that, after you get the bond polarity, you need to determine the whole molecule, whether it's polar or non-polar. Okay? So, uh, kita, you akan belajar lah yang ni eh, hari ni. Okay, so we have three types of um, covalent bond, polar, non-polar and also coordinate covalent. Okay, yang ni you dah belajar in details kan sebelum ni on how to draw, what's the different, okay, the dative bond though. Okay, so polarity eh. <coughs> so, covalent bonding between unlike atoms. What does it mean by unlike atoms? Meaning that dia bukan atom yang sama lah. Different atoms will result in unequal sharing. Okay, even though they're sharing, they are jadi unequal sharing, it's actually later will form a polar covalent bond. Okay, so the more electronegative atom will pull the shared electron. Okay, they dah share, tapi yang lebih electronegative akan tarik, will pull the shared electrons closer to its sides. Okay, so the end with the larger electron density will get a partial negative charge. Okay, dia bukan negative charge, dia separuh, partial je. Okay, so that's why they put as delta uh, D negative. So the other end, uh, yang kurang electron tu, electron deficient will get a partial positive, which is delta positive. Okay, paling simple when we uh, look at this is HCl, for example. 
Okay, we know that this is a bond sharing, okay, between hydrogen and chlorine. But between hydrogen and chlorine, uh, automatically kita tahulah chlorine kan, uh, dia duduk paling kanan. So, it has um, a more uh, high uh, ataupun uh, more lah, more electron negativity as compared to hydrogen. So, that's why the more electron negative atom will pulls the shared electron closer to its sides. Dia tarik lebih banyak so that's why dia akan jadi delta negative while automatically this hydrogen will become delta positive. Okay. So bila dia ada delta positive negative ni that's why this polar we call it as polar bond. Dia polar lah. Okay. Ha, ni kita refer balik lah ni eh yang belajar sebelum ni in chapter 2. So this is the electron negativity scale. So paling the highest one is actually fluorine lah. Okay. <coughs> so tadi eh kejap kita compare tadi between hydrogen and chlorine kan Hydrogen is 2.1 and chlorine is 3.0 So this is more electronegative even though di bawah kan Tapi 2.1 and 3.0 So that's why uh, uh, Cl is negative, delta negative eh Okay so how uh, to classify Tadi kan kita tahu uh, dalam uh, apa Learning outcome tadi, uh, kita ada tiga jenis sebenarnya, classification bonds, okay. So we have non-polar covalent, we have ionic and also polar covalent. The difference, dif difference between electron negativity, eh, delta E N, eh. okay. When you have zero, meaning that it, uh, the bond type is non-polar covalent. For example, paling simple sini lah, chlorine dengan chlorine. Kita tahu tadi chlorine value is 3.0. So, this is 3.0, this is also 3.0. So, 3.0 subtract with 3.0 is equal to 0. So, maksudnya dia tak ada ne the, apa, partially negative, partially positive. Sebab dia share equally. So, that's why when the difference is 0, it is a non-polar covalent bond. Okay. However, if it's... Uh, equals or higher than 2, it is already ionic. Bila value tu sangat besar, dia adalah ionic. So, time bila dia polar tadi, yang HCl ni tadi. Okay, HCl. Okay, so ni 3.0, this is 2.1. Okay, when you uh, subtract, the value is actually in between 0 and 2. Uh, itu we consider as polar covalent bond. Okay, kenapa kita kalau merah kat sini? Sebab kita actually uh, for this kind of uh, topic, kita banyak cover this polar covalent lah. Sometimes dia akan dapat non-polar. Macam ni, CL dengan CL. Okay. Ni kita boleh cerita pasal bond eh. Kita belum cerita pasal molekul yang ada banyak bond. Only one type of bond. Okay. You can just simply by looking at the difference between electronegativity. Okay, so uh, if you look at this, okay, dia punya trend dia If you share uh, equally the electron, it is a covalent Covalent ni memang serta buku dia, uh, dia mention about covalent je Dia tak mention about non-polar Kalau covalent saja, automatically we know that it is pure covalent Ataupun non-polar uh, So jangan confuse lah eh, benda yang sama Even though dia tak ada perkataan ni, covalent saja itu adalah non-polar eh And then bila dia, koval, dia polar, dia akan mention about polar. Okay. So this one is partial transfer. So nampak tak? This sebenarnya share. Tapi share dia unequally. So that's why dia macam-macam partial transfer. Dia not exactly transfer. Sebab kalau dia transfer, it is actually ionic. Okay. So look at this note here. LCL3, BECL2 are covalent. Okay. Remember, AL, BE, Dia ni macam special case kan, even though dia, be dia bebal tu dah satu hal, uh, incomplete octet. Satu lagi, um, actually we know that AL group 3A, BE is group 2A, kita selalu tahu macam A, itu kan ionic. But here, bila dia combine dengan this chlorine, for example, dia adalah covalent compound. Okay, because of the small size, high charge and high polarizing power, bila you kira the value of EN, you akan dapat less than 2. Dia dapat ni lah, more than 0 but less than 2. That's why the um, polar covalent eh. Okay. So <coughs> macam mana apa benda bulat-bulat gemuk-gemuk ni kan. Uh, so actually kenapa yang dia uh, positif negatif tu kan. Actually yang gemuk ni biasanya uh, we we as I tunjuk HCL lah eh. Okay. Saya buat CL belah kanan eh nak tunjuk. So this is delta negative kan? So this is delta positive. So bila dia kata dia akan pull the electrons towards CL, so basically um, 
uh, kalau you nampak kan CL ni lebih gemuk, betul tak? So CL ni lebih gemuk sebenarnya because dia tarik elektron. So that's why you tengok kat sini sebenarnya ada banyak negatif. Dia tarik daripada hidrogen. Okay. So yang banyak yang menggemukkan dia tu actually uh, kita, uh, represent the electron density. Density of electron. Dia padat kat klorin. But if you look at this klorin, nampak tak? Sebab dia CL dengan CL. Dia share equally. Kalau sini ada tiga, sini pun ada tiga for example. Equally. That's why bentuk dia sama size. The density of electron are equal between CL on the left side and, the, and CL on the right side. Okay. However, for ionic, you kan NaCl. You nampak tetap nampak macam sebab dia bonding kan, dia bond. But here is not partially positive, partially negative. Dia exactly positive, exactly negative. Itu beza kan? Beza eh? Antara um, <coughs> non-polar covalent, polar covalent and also ionic. Okay. Kalau you memang you kira, you akan dapat macam ni lah. Non-polar of course you dapat zero sebab sama. And then kalau dia polar, you akan dapat value dia in between kan? So in between two and zero. And then for uh, ionic, dia akan dapat two or more. Okay. So let's look at this checkpoint. Okay. Classify the following bonds as ionic polar covalent or non-polar covalent. Okay. Yang ni sebelum ni dia mention about covalent je tapi saya tambahlah. Okay. Again lah tak apa. Kalau you tak jumpa perkataan non-polar tapi dia mention about covalent satu lagi polar covalent. Obviously this is non-polar lah. Okay. So the bond in HI now automatically difference in atom. The bond in KF. K dengan F. The bond in ALF3. So maknanya between AL dengan F dalam ALF3 punya molecule lah. And then the CC bond in CH3, CH3. C dengan C saja. So what's, what's uh, the answer? So H dengan I. First kita tengok ni lah. Okay. So ni automatically this is not ionic bond right? Okay. So of course and then dia different atom so supposedly dia akan dapat different Uh, value of En lah. So actually uh, sebab ni just checkpoint. So you need to find the value of En. You kira you tolak je. Okay. So dapat 0.4. Bila you kira dapat 0.4 of course this is polar covalent. And then delta En. Let's say lah you tak ingat lah ini ionic sebenarnya kan. So you kira actually memang you akan dapat more than 2. That's why the ionic bond. Okay. And then for C C ni pasal dia special kan? AL kan? Aluminium. Uh, you you nak tahu betul-betul bond tu sebenarnya polar ke ionic ke? You kira saja. You you tolak kan actually the value of delta En is 2.5. So sebenarnya dia lebih daripada uh, 2. So that's why it's considered as ionic. Even though the whole uh, molecule tu sebenarnya dia consider bawah molecular formula, molecular compound kan? Uh, apa? Incomplete octet. Okay. So next is the CC bond. Uh, C dengan C. You abaikan lah sebenarnya kan. The rest tu adalah hydrogen kan. Tapi dia nak tengok actually between this je sebenarnya. So C dengan C. So C dengan C sebab dia identical. So that's why value is zero. So that's why we call, uh, uh, apa conclude this one as non-polar covalent bond. Okay. Boleh ya? Eh? Clear eh? So basically for bond whether the polar non-polar or ionic, you can just by calculating the EN, the difference in EN, eh? uh, electronegativity. Any questions so far for bond polarity? I hope that they're... Madam, ada. Madam. Ah, ya? Yeah? Uh, kalau yang non-polar covalent ni kan, hmm. dia memang between same atom ke? Uh, okay. Uh, bagus soalan awak. Kalau same uh, same atom, basically automatically kita tahulah sebab value EN dia sama. Kan? Ada juga okay, sekejap saya tunjuk dekat table ni eh. Okay. Hmm, for example. Nampak tak ni? N dengan CL. Value dia sama. N, CL. Contohlah saya kata ni polar ke non-polar ke ionic. You tengok balik lah. Value kat sini This is 3.0. CL walaupun di different atom, the value is also 3.0. Kita potong pula tu tak nampak eh. Yeah, 3.0 juga. So, although they have a different atom, <coughs> value of EN dia end up delta EN is equal to zero. So, they consider as non-polar. 
Okay. The whatever it is, you still have to, uh, for bond, eh, bond polarity, you still have to refer the value of EN lah. Okay, so logically for bond polarity, they kena bagi this kind of value. But here because the checkpoint kan, so they assume you cari lah sendiri, you sell up balik you punya value eh. Okay. Clear eh, saya jawab soalan tadi. Tapi kalau the same atom, paling senang lah. Even you tak tengok pun, you tahu. Sebab uh, identical, mesti akan dapat sama value dia eh. Okay. Okay, so itu untuk bond polarity. Remember, bila bond maksudnya between one atom dengan one atom je. But you have learned previously uh, Vesper theory, molecular geometry, you have uh, at least basic shape, uh, basic, I mean that uh, the electron geometry at least ada lima, betul tak? You have linear, ingat? Linear, you have trigonal planar, you have uh, tetrahedral, trigonal bipyramidal and also octahedral. Basic ada lima. Lepas tu pecah pula ada lompat bentuk lain yang dia bentuk lain kan. So kat situ kita nak tengok pula. Maksudnya the maximum uh, you boleh dapat actually enam bond serentak tu tak. Uh, octahedral ada enam. So okay bond you dah determine dah bond dia. Uh, polar non polar. Okay. So lepas tu you have to determine also the uh, the whole molecule. Whether the polar or non polar. So you tak boleh conclude yang uh, even though the polar, you have the polar bonds but the whole molecule is considered polar. No, you tak boleh determine macam tu. For the whole molecule, you have to do vector. You belajar fizik kan? Vector. Ah, uh, You kena buat vector. So kat sini, <coughs> dia ada cara dia lah. Tak perlulah sampai you nak kena draw macam mana nak dapatkan vector tu. Cuma kat sini kita ada, kita selalu simplify kan. Uh, yang penting you faham dia punya a trick dia. Dia ada trick dia lah. Okay. So okay saya so explain dulu. For molecules dia tak adalah uh, uh, kita compare just between polar and non-polar saja. So in this case tak adalah kes ionic sebab normally for molarity yang ni kita masuk bawah tajuk covalent molecule. So that's why ionic tu kita tak masuk dalam ni lah. Okay sebab dia sharing bond kan. <coughs> so Kita tahu tadi chemical bonds that are polar when, bila dia ada uh, partially positive and also partially negative. Okay. So bila ada all of this uh, macam charge tu. Okay. Uh, kita measure dia actually pakai dipole moment. Nama dia eh. So kita guna Mio ni. Okay. This is dipole moment. It's used to measure the bond polarity. Okay. So a dipole arrow is used to show the polarity of a bond. Meaning that okay for example kan. Kita tahu nampak ah ni saya cakap kan bila dia lagi gemuk maksudnya elektron density dia lagi banyak kat sini. Okay so ini kalau kita tengok by experiment lah. Okay so kita tahu so delta negative is here so maksudnya eh, dia akan tertarik towards negative kan. So that's why arrow awak kena menuju ke yang negative. So dia, dia tambah satu kat belakang tu. Ha, itu kita panggil the dipole arrow. Okay. So this dipole moment is actually affected by molecular geometry. Okay. That's why uh, tajuk polarity you akan belajar selepas you belajar Vesper theory, molecular geometry. Sebab apa? Remember, ingat tak? Water molecule. Saya suka guna contoh yang paling dekat dengan awak lah. Okay. So when you have water molecule, if you draw Lewis structure, you akan draw macam ni. Betul tak? Okay. Lewis structure, water. Okay, kalau you simply tengok macam ni je without you pergi pada geometri, kita tahu dia bentuk apa? Linear, betul tak? But this is not linear. Actually bentuk dia adalah band. Bentuk dia macam ni. Okay, nampak tak? Bentuk dia different eh. Ah, Because of this uh, different uh, shape, it will give different polarity. Okay, sebab you nak buat vector tadi. Kalau yang ni linear, End up dia jadi non-polar. Kalau yang ni sebenarnya dia water molecule adalah polar. Okay saya akan tunjuklah lepas ni. Okay that's why you have to always remember for uh, to check on the polarity of the molecules you need to uh, you have to make sure that your molecules are already in its molecular geometry. Shape dia kena betul. Barulah you determine dia punya geometry by using the vector. Okay so for example Kita let's say nak determine this is polar molecules kan. <coughs> we have two different structure. We have NH3 and also NF3. Okay. 
If you draw Lewis structure, okay, dah kira gedebak-gedebak semua, you buat the geometry, you can uh, see, okay, uh, maybe biasa kita akan buat macam ni kan, uh, Lewis structure. Ya. Yeah. Kalau you stop macam ni, dia akan jadi apa? T-shape. Betul tak? Okay, sebenarnya ini bukan bentuk dia. Ini bentuk dia adalah macam ni, which is bentuk trigonal pyramidal daripada bentuk asal tetrahedral. Okay, so you kita belajar the, uh, bond sama je. Bond dia akan pergi daripada less electron negative to more electron negative. So antara nitrogen dengan hydrogen and nitrogen is more electron negative. So that's why dia akan pull towards nitrogen untuk tiga-tiga ni. Okay, so by using the vector sebenarnya, concept vector, Tiga-tiga dah naik ke sini, you rasa uh, ke mana dia punya resultant dia. Atau kita panggil dia net dipole moment. So net dipole moment is here. End up, okay. Sekejap, eh. Contoh eh. Hopefully you nampak eh. Okay, ada tiga kan. Hydrogen pergi nitrogen. Hydrogen pergi nitrogen. Dia pun pergi nitrogen. So end up resultant will be pointing upward. Dia tertarik semua ke atas. Okay, ha, ini uh, dia resultant dia adalah ke atas. So, bila dia ada resultant, so that's why um, the dipole moment is not equal to zero. Okay, mu is not equal to zero. Sebab dia tak boleh cancel. Or the resultant is not equal to zero. Macam itulah, dia ada resultant lah. Resultant dia ke atas. Okay, kalau you tengok macam ni, Even though uh, macam ni kan, kenapa bentuk ni salah eh? Sebab macam ni hydrogen, even though kita tahu, okay, ini akan ke sini. Ini pun akan ke sini, ini pun akan ke sini. Okay, kalau ikutkan ini dengan ni boleh cancel. Ini akan ke sini. Nampak tak? Resultant dia, dia sebenarnya dah salah. Okay, resultant dia, walaupun nampak macam lebih kurang, dia pointing towards nitrogen. Tapi bentuk sebenar adalah uh, trigonal pyramidal. Okay, so tengok pula contoh yang kedua, NF3. Okay, nampak sekali sekali tengok macam eh sama. Tapi dia punya net dipole moment dia lain. Kalau you tengok kat sini, between nitrogen and fluorine, fluorine is more electronegative. So arrow dia pointing towards fluorine. Dia terbalik eh. Okay, so towards fluorine, semua tarik ke bawah. So the net dia akan jadi ke bawah. Kan? Jadi kan, you tengok kat sini, fluorine, fluorine, fluorine. So tarik ke bawah, tarik ke bawah, tarik ke bawah. So tertariklah dia ke bawah. Dia punya net dia. The uh, resultant dia. So that's why kat sini dia kata net dia ke bawah. Again, bila ada net value, so mu is not equal to zero. So that's why itu adalah pola molecules. Okay. <coughs> Clear eh? Asalkan ada value net tu, maksudnya dia polar lah. Okay, so macam mana tengok dia non-polar? Okay, kalau dia non-polar, simple je. For example, kita tunjuk contoh yang simple dulu lah. CO2. Let's say lah, you dah gedebuk-gedebuk, you dah kira Lewis structure. This is the best Lewis structure. This is the geometry, which is linear shape. You tengok kat sini, C dengan O, O is more electronegative. So that's why ini delta negatif, ini delta negatif, ini delta positif. So dia akan point to what? Negative, right? So this one also points to word negative. And then you tengok kat sini oxygen, this is also oxygen. So they have the same EN value. So dia tarik, dia macam you main tarik tali. Okay, oxygen dengan oxygen, tarik. Sama energy, kita assume sama lah. Sebab EN dia sama, magnitude dia sama. Tarik, so end up dia boleh cancel out each other. Boleh cancel. So bila cancel, ni kata kata dipole moments cancel each other. So mu is equal to zero. Okay, so bila equals to zero, we consider it is a non-polar molecules. Okay, ha, ini yang saya cakap tadi. It's not necessarily that when the molecules have polar bonds, it will have polar molecules. No. For this case, it has polar bonds. Dia ada, magnitude dia. Tapi later it can cancel out each other. So it will become non-polar molecules. Okay, so same goes to this one. For example, you have um, octahedral shape. Okay, so remember octahedral dia bentuk macam ni kan. Tapak dia ada empat, so ada atas, ada bawah. So let's say lah, let's say lah semua terminal tu sama macam ni eh. Fluorine kan. So, you naik atas, you turun bawah satu kan. So, atas dengan bawah can cancel each other. Betul? Kan? Kalau you tengok slide, yang atas dengan bawah boleh cancel. 
Lepas tu yang ujung dengan ujung Okay yang ujung Okay ujung kat sini tarik dengan ni Ni pun boleh cancel Boleh cancel yang ini pun boleh cancel Okay so clear eh Sometimes ada juga student buat macam ni Okay atas dengan bawah boleh cancel So ini dengan ini Dia punya resultant dia ke ke sini Betul tak? So ini dengan ni resultant dia pun ke sini So ini pun tetap boleh cancel So end up semuanya boleh cancel So the double moment cancel each other So this one mu is equal to zero Okay so end up dia akan dapat juga non polar molecules Okay so ni saya cakap eh Even though the bonds in molecule are polar Since the bonds double moment cancel each other It considered as non polar molecules And generally symmetrical molecules are non-polar Apa maksud dia? Senang je maksud simetri ni Magnitude tu Dia tarik semua tarik tu semua sama Maksudnya they have uh, the similar uh, atom With similar Baiklah bila similar atom of course dia dapat similar electronegativity kan So that's why consider as uh, symmetry And symmetry ni paling senang selalu saya cakap dengan student Awak ingat je kita ada lima basic shape Lima tu uh, Maksud saya uh, shape yang dalam bentuk Elektron geometri And syarat dia without long pair Dan semua semua uh, Terminal atom tu Dia atom yang sama Macam ni lah CO2 SF6 Tak say lah Kalau you ada lima kan Ada lima pun kalau semua sama CL lah say PCL5 Semua sama Dia still considered as Symmetry kalau dia simetri, dia non-polar molecules. Dia boleh cancel. But let's say uh, SF6 yang dekat dalam awak punya slide ni, okay, tiba-tiba F ni saya tukar jadi CL. Adakah dia polar? Or non-polar? Adakah dia masih non-polar? Jawapan dia, no. Jawapan dia dah jadi polar. Because, okay, tadi kan kita tarik kiri kanan, boleh cancel. But atas bawah, even though tarik, tarik, tapi you assume macam tadilah, tarik tali. Kita tarik tali, uh, F tu, uh, let's say energy dia kuat sikit, yang CL tu kurang. So, of course, dia akan tertarik lebih pada yang kuat. So, uh, bila kat situ, akan ada resultant, betul tak? You buat vector lah, so dia tertarik ke mana. So, kat situ, uh, kalau you dah tukar jadi CL, so mu dia is not equal to zero. Eh, so they, that's why dia akan jadi polar ah, You ubah satu je dia terus jadi ni Ataupun tadi you ubah satu dengan apa You buang satu jadikan dia lone pair Pun sama Sebab dia dah tak boleh cancel each other eh Okay <coughs> ah, Look at this example Actually basically contoh yang saya tunjuk uh, Saya baru explain tadi lah uh, Kita nak tunjuk contoh macam Let's say lah dia ada similar molecules shape Okay Then bond dia polar tapi polariti dia tak sama. For example, CCL4 and CHCl3. Okay. So here bila semua CL, kita consider terus dia as symmetry. Tak ada long pair dan semua CL. So dia actually dia boleh cancel each other. Kalau you tengok balik dalam, sebenarnya tetrahedral paling susah nak tengok lah. Okay. Tapi kalau you tengok dalam bentuk uh, molekul eh, satu ke atas, tiga ke bawah kan. So tiga ke bawah semua tertarik kepada CL. So end up dia punya resultant adalah ke bawah. Okay. Ke bawah ini adalah resultant between carbon and chlorine kan. So yang resultant bawah akan end up cancel dengan result, uh, dengan yang ke atas. So that's why dia boleh cancel out each other. Okay. So that's why the, not, uh, the net dipole moment is equal to zero eh. Okay, so ini non-polar. However, if you go to CHCl3, macam saya cakap tadi, you ubah satu je. Cl jadi hydrogen. So now, um, C dengan H, uh, H akan pointing towards carbon. Sebab carbon is more electron negative daripada H. So dia akan masuk kat situ. Yang ini kan tadi dia punya result dia ke bawah kan. So ke bawah. Ni ke bawah, ini pun ke bawah. So of course dia ada resultant. So the net dipole moment dia are pointing downwards. Okay that's why dia kata does not cancel each other. So the mu is not equal to zero end up dia jadi polar molecules. Okay clear eh? Ini actually to explain uh, about the symmetrical shape tadi lah. Okay so let look, uh, let's look at this checkpoint 16 question 1. Determine the polarity of water molecule. 
Okay, saya tak nak bagi masa lah. Saya, uh, sebab saya dah tunjuk contoh juga pasal water kan. Okay, tak apalah eh. Saya tunjuk, uh, you boleh tengok sama-sama. If you have water molecules, okay. So basically, kalau you draw Lewis structure, of course, nak tak nak, you kena draw dulu Lewis structure. So that's why Lewis structure is very basic. Okay, kena betul-betul faham Lewis structure. Sebab daripada Lewis structure, you can determine the uh, molecular geometry. So daripada molecular geometry baru you boleh determine polarity. Okay, so that's why bila you buat Lewis structure, okay, water you have uh, uh, two long pairs with two bonding pairs. So that's why bentuk dia adalah macam ni, kan? So kat sini ada long pairs, kan? So long pairs sebenarnya you boleh abalkan. Okay, between oxygen and hydrogen, dia akan pointing towards Oxygen right? Okay. So that's why the resultant will become pointing upwards. Okay. So bila ni maknanya ni is not equal to zero. Tahu tak? So that's why dia adalah polar molecules. Let's say lah you lupa kan. You lupa nak tukar dia jadi bentuk ni. You buat dia bentuk linear macam ni. So sama juga dia akan pergi kat sini kan. Yang ni pun akan pergi dekat oxygen. So yang ni sebab sama Tolakan dia sama. Dia bukan tarik sekarang dia tolak sama. So dia punya uh, magnitude sama so dia boleh cancel. So bila, bila bercancel mu is equal to zero. So here dia akan jadi non-polar. So that's why bahayanya kalau you tak draw dia dalam bentuk molecular geometry yang sebenar. This is wrong lah. Okay. This is the correct one. Boleh clear eh. So that's why <coughs> You make, you must make sure that this water molecule mesti dalam bentuk band in order to uh, to predict the polarity of the molecules. Okay, any question tak so far? Up until this checkpoint. Ada nak tanya apa-apa? Tak ada eh. Kalau tak ada, I assume you faham eh uh, on polarity. Okay, now. Can you please try do this checkpoint? Predict whether the following molecules polar or non-polar. Dia paling senang selalu soalan dia tanya, polar ke tak polar? So better lah eh, you baru belajar kan. Show the polarity. Ha, bila dia kata show, show tu ha, biasalah make sure eh, show lah kena tunjuk. Bond polarity. Kita assume lah structure ni memang dah dapat uh, the best Lewis structure. You tinggal nak tengok je polar ke tak polar. Maybe I give you One minute, two minutes. Sekejap je ni tak boleh nak draw lebih structure pun. Nak determine je pola ke tak pola. Okay, dah. First, again. Kira dulu berapa dia punya geometri dia. Sini dia ada satu, ni ada dua, tiga. So, three electron groups. Bila three electron group, betul asal dia sebenarnya adalah trigonal. Lena eh. Ha, you jangan simply kata, oh okay, linear ni tolak je. Pergi mana, pergi mana. So you kena draw balik. Bentuk dia sebenarnya CL kat sini, double bond O dekat sini. Okay. Ni bentuk je saya buat bentuk eh. How about this one? Sama juga. Ada tiga. Ah, ni ada tiga lah. Ni tadi tiga with long pair kan. Okay. Basically itu bentuk dia. <coughs> Now baru kita boleh predict bond dia polar or non-polar kan. So by looking at this, dia dah bagi value of En, okay. So between nitrogen and oxygen, nitrogen and oxygen, so oxygen is more electron negative, so that's why they're pointing towards oxygen. How about between nitrogen and chlorine? Ah, uh, Ni tadi ada contoh kan. <coughs> Sebab value dia sama. So nak letak ke mana? Arrow. <coughs> tak payah letak apa-apa lah. Okay? Tak payah letak apa-apa. Biar kosong. Tapi now dia baru bond. So kalau dia kata show the resultant maksudnya dia akan tetap pointing towards oxygen lah. 
So that's why mu is not equal to zero. So this is polar molecules. Okay, how about SO3? So SO3, sulfur and oxygen 3.5 and 2.5. So of course lah, oxygen is also, also most electro, uh, more electronegative than sulfur. So they akan pointing towards oxygen here. This one akan ke sini. Yang ini akan ke sini. Okay, so I tengok ini. Ini dengan ini. Okay, remember trigonal plana. Ni eh, bentuk dia kan trigonal plana. Okay, kiri, kanan. Dia punya resultant dia ke bawah kan. So maksudnya ni result dia ke bawah. Okay. So antara yang ini dengan atas dengan bawah dia boleh cancel. So end up dia boleh cancel each other kan? So cancel each other. So that's why mu will become zero. So this is non polar molecules. Okay. Boleh eh? Clear eh? <coughs> So okay, uh, ni contoh dia ya. Ada punya jawapan eh. Okay. So this is polar. SO3 is non-polar. Okay. So maksudnya yang ni resultant dia akan ke sini lah. So yang ini resultant dia tak ada sebab dia boleh cancel. So mu is equal to zero. Okay. Check point 18. CO2 and OCS are both linear. Explain why CO2 is non-polar but OCS is polar. Okay, yang ni saya nak you buat. Cuba, dua minit. CO2, OCS. Maksudnya you kena, sebab ni tak ada apa-apa kan daripada molecule. You try, draw, daripada Lewis structure. Dapatkan dulu bentuk dia. O dengan S dia sama valence electron dia. Ada enam. Carbon ada empat. Ha, cuba pergi dah. Eh, cuba buat up to explanation tu lah kenapa. Dia dah, sebenarnya dia dah mention dah. CO2 non-polar, CO2 OCS polar. Cuba you dapatkan tu. Betul tak you dapat tu? Saya bagi dua minit eh. Okay, dah ke? Okay. <clears throat> so kita tengok kat sini eh. CO2 and OCS. So basically sebenarnya both CO2 eh apa saya buat ni? CO2 dengan OCS. Tak kisahlah mana yang kira kanan kan. Ha. Dia beza kat sini je. Biasa oksigen dia bersulfur kan. Okay. So basically if you draw the Lewis structure sebenarnya you akan dapat 
Dah berbon, betul tak? Dah berbon eh, okay So uh, Dia sebenarnya linear o CO2 and OCS is actually a linear I remember dia mention belum kat sini kan So If you draw uh, Let's say lah You already know it's a linear structure Okay CO2 uh, Dia punya Bond apa lah Okay It will go towards oxygen uh, For both Tapi sebab magnitude dia sama That's why dia boleh cancel each other right So bila cancel each other Mu is equal to Zero Okay So that's why dia nak pulang Okay But for OCS If you go uh, You look at this Okay macam tadi lah saya cakap dia punya apa magnitude dia tak sama Satu pergi O tetap sama Satu pergi S tetap sama kiri kanan Tapi sebab oksigen is more electronegative than S So that's why dia ada Dia tak boleh cancel each other So dia, dia ada dia punya net dari pemohon lah Dia akan lebih tertarik kepada oksigen So sama lah macam you main tarik-tarik tu Okay Mana yang lagi kuat tarik You akan tertarik ke belah yang kuat tu Okay So You can uh, explain here In CO2, the two bonds moment uh, In opposite direction are equal So therefore they cancel Cancel each other Okay, you, are, you will have to mention about the cancel each other lah Dia punya uh, Bond moments eh? Dapur moments atau bond moments Okay But in OCS, even though the two bonds moment Pointing opposite direction But they are not the same magnitude So that's why they do not cancel each other Okay Okay, uh, so far ada soalan tak untuk polarity? Any question so far for polarity? I hope tak ada eh. Okay eh, clear eh so far? No, madam. Okay. Okay, yeah. okay thank you. Yeah. Okay, so now <coughs> for the next subtopic, saya masuk sikit lah sebab nak samakan kelas tadi. Actually kelas uh, kelas ni Uh, ada tertinggal sikit sebab kita ada uh, lagi satu jam kan uh, Ada hutang lagi satu jam Tapi tak apa saya try uh, masuk ni Okay so this is an, uh, the next subtopic Where the the title is balance bond theory and also hybridization hmm. Balance bond theory Bunyi macam vagabond Okay balance bond theory is a balance Okay uh, so of course kita relate kembali dengan balance electron Okay and hybridization, hybrid lah. So do you know what is the meaning by hybridization? Hybrid, the mixing kan, the mix. Kacuk, A dengan B kacuk jadi AB. Ha, macam tu lah. Kambing dengan, apa eh? Tapi saya lupa kan. Kucing dengan uh, tiger kacuk jadi apa. Ha, macam tu lah. Okay so, ni sama. Kita kacuk apa but here kita kacukkan, kita hybridkan orbital. Okay, so that's why yang ini you akan relatekan balik dengan apa yang you belajar dekat chapter 2 bawah tajuk electronic configuration. Previously saya kata okay banyak refer chapter 2 balik tapi bawah tajuk um, predictable. But here kita akan relatekan balik pada electronic configuration. Okay, so that's why saya cakap chapter 3, chapter 2 you kena betul-betul mahir untuk you proceed to chapter 3. Okay, so by the end of this topic, you should be able to explain the concept of overlapping orbitals, overlap, okay, and hybridization of SPD, okay, hybrid, okay, and draw the orbital diagram, ha, eh, the, kita mention about orbital diagram of hybridization, okay, saya akan explain lah, ni semua hybrid ni, they mix kan orbital S and orbital P and also orbital D, okay, and then sketch, again, you have to know how to sketch the overlapping orbitals. And describe the formation and then kita ada bond dekat sini ada dua jenis which is sigma and pi bond. Okay. <coughs> okay. Sekejap. So valence bond theory is actually a theory to explain the electron pair or covalent bond by quantum mechanics. Again, yang saya mention lah. That's why they relatekan balik uh, electronic configuration. Yang you belajar sebelum ni lah Angular, momentum, bla 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 tu lah Tapi you dah belajar in details kan You belajar terus, you, at least you faham The electronic configuration You akan um, It's easier lah for you to learn on this Balance bond theory Okay, so a bond forms when an orbital On one atom overlap With another orbital Okay Kita belajar sebab ni, you mungkin nampak Okay, buat bond macam ni je kan, AB 
Ha, ni bond lah. Dia share satu elektron, sini satu elektron kan? Sharing. But you need to imagine now if you relatekan balik dengan you belajar quantum mechanics which is orbital diagram. So valence kat sini, sini ada satu elektron, sini pun ada satu. Okay. So ini dia ada orbital dia kan? For example ni orbital S. Ni pun orbital S. Orbital S bentuk dia apa? Bulat. Ni pun bulat. So dia akan overlap. Overlap macam tu. Ha, ini maksud dia overlap. Okay. So dia akan combine satu atas satu bawah. Remember sebab ini bila overlap, bila campur dia akan jadi satu atas satu bawah. Sebab kita tahu maksimum dua elektron kan? So nak faham ke tu macam tu lah maksud dia eh. So the maximum number of elektron in both overlap orbitals is two lah. Yang ni kan? Kita tahu maksimum orbital diagram tu kan ada dua saja. Okay. So ha, ni tadi contohlah. For example hydrogen. Hydrogen valence elektron dia pada S. Kan? Betul tak? S. S orbital bentuk dia bulat. So that's why dia overlap bulat dan bulat. So actually dia overlap tu dekat tengah. Sini. Tengah ni eh. Okay. So overlapping between S and S. Okay. We also can have the overlapping between S and P. Contoh hydrogen fluoride. Hydrogen dia valence dia satu pada S. Fluorine kalau ingat valence dia sebenarnya ada tujuh kan? Betul tak? Florin kan? Uh, dia ada SP. Satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima, enam, tujuh. Dia akan overlap kat mana? Dekat yang kurang ni. Betul tak? Yang kurang ni dia akan overlap dengan S daripada hidrogen. Nampak tak? Kalau dia tengok orbital diagram dia akan nampak. Okay yang satu ni akan overlap kat sini. Kalau dari segi bentuk orbital overlapping maknanya kita tahu ini hidrogen bentuk dia S. Kalau fluorine yang satu tu bentuk dia P. So remember bentuk P bentuk um, infinity macam tu kan. Bentuk uh, dumbbell tu. So that's why overlapping dia between satu bulat satu lagi bentuk two balloons tied together. Ha, kat mana dia overlapping? Kat sini. Kat tengah tu. Okay. So this one. Overlapping. And end up overlapping ni lah yang maksud dia hybrid. hybrid. So hybrid ni nanti end up dia akan menghasilkan Uh, produce one, another one orbital, new orbital sebenarnya. Okay, that's why kalau tengok bentuk dia pun akan jadi uh, lain daripada bentuk asal. Okay, tak perlu risau actually tak adalah sampai kita suruh you draw bentuk pelik macam ni eh. At least you know overlapping kalau S dengan P overlapping between S bentuk bulat dengan P yang bentuk dumbbell tu. Okay, okay. So I know that you you tak ada slide ni tapi you just tengok je pada ni. Saya nak explain in details okay about overlapping. Tadi kan saya dah tunjuk pasal overlapping between S dengan S. So bulat dengan bulat. Hydrogen contoh dia. For example hydrogen fluoride between S dengan P. Boleh juga. Bulat dengan bentuk dumbbell. Ataupun P dengan P for example boleh juga. Fluorin F2. So bentuk dia overlapping dia P dengan P. Kat sini juga. Overlapping dia yang penting dia tetap overlap dua elektron saja yang akan masuk dekat part overlapping tu eh. Okay. And kan tadi saya ada mention about sebenarnya uh, overlapping orbital ni dia ada dua jenis bond. Okay. Dia beza dengan apa yang saya explain sebelum ni bond yang ionic covalent tu. Ni bond dalam overlapping tu kita ada sigma and pi bond. Okay. Apa apa maksud sigma bond? Sigma bond ni actually uh, bila dia overlapping secara end to end. N to N tu maksudnya ujung ke ujung. Okay. S to S, P to P, S to any hybrid orbital ke dia ujung ke ujung. Okay. So that's why nanti overlapping di sini ha, dia sigma bond. Kalau pi dia actually overlapping secara sideway. Sideway maksudnya macam ni. Dia menegak dia secara bertindih dua. So nampak tak? Yang ni kan. Dia ada ni macam ni. Tiba-tiba dah pahal bentuk dia macam ni pula. Okay. Sebenarnya bentuk dia bila dia overlapping macam ni dia akan overlap Uh, macam ni je sebenarnya kalau ikutkan. Satu overlap kat sini, satu lagi overlap kat sini. Okay. But later sebab biasanya overlapping pi ni tengah-tengah dia ada lagi central atom tau. So that's why you tak boleh nak rapat je tu. That's why dia end up dia akan jadi macam ni. So that's why kadang bila kita buat kita akan buat macam ni. Okay. Kita ada sini satu. Lepas tu kita ada sini lagi satu kan. Uh, kita buat macam ni je garis. Uh, maknanya ni overlap secara pi. Okay. Kalau overlap secara sigma, dia senang. Dia boleh draw je macam ni. Ha, ni, ha, ni sigma. 
Okay, pai dia macam ni. So that's why kalau ni pasal buku, ni buku punya contoh kan. That's why bentuk dia macam nampak cantik sangat bentuk balon. So that's why ni sebenarnya basically ah uh, ini adalah satu P. Sini adalah satu lagi P. So dia overlap uh, atas dan bawah ni overlapping. Where sebenarnya kalau in macam mana? Uh, <coughs> theoretically dia macam ni lah. Kita tahu dia overlapping secara side to side. Okay. Tapi sebab nanti kat sebenarnya kat tengah ni ada bond lain ada apa sebab tu dia end up dia akan jadi macam ni. So that's why uh, untuk draw nanti saya akan ajar lah uh, later untuk draw. Kita akan buat je bentuk macam ni. Okay. So kat sini uh, interaction dia sigma bonds is are stronger than pi bonds. Sangat kuat. So in terms of stronger ni saya suka bagi analogi contoh accident crater eh. For example eh sigma tadi uh, ujung ke ujung kan end to end. So you imagine um, impact uh, accident uh, daripada kereta dengan kereta depan dengan depan. Impact dia sangat kuat tu tak? So that's why kita assume nak, nak bagi nak tunjuk analogi dia impact dia kuat. So sigma adalah stronger. But for pi bond sebab dia parallel tu tak? So dia perpendicular tu dia exist. So let's say lah dia accident tu biasanya macam uh, dia macam terlanggar, tercalar je lah. Paling pun side mirror awak je yang patah. Ah, uh, So dia tak kuat kat situ. Okay, ini nak bagi senang ingat lah. Okay, so sigma are stronger than pi bond. Okay, so uh, sigma ni stronger than pi bond. So uh, kat mana kita nak determine yang sigma dengan pi ni? Okay, so uh, sigma ni dia mesti ada sebab dia paling kuat kan? Setiap bond dia mesti ada. Kita tahu kita ada single, double bond and triple bond. Okay, setiap uh, single, double and triple bond mesti ada satu sigma sahaja. So, bila dia single bond, of course dia ada sigma je lah. Tapi bila dia ada double bond, dia ada satu sigma, satu pi. Bila dia triple bond, dia ada satu sigma, dua pi. Okay, so yang ni you kena ingat lah. Okay, sigma ni penting, sangat penting kena ada dan dia ada satu sahaja. So let's say lah you ada banyak uh, dah siap bond dengan uh, apa Lewis structure the, uh, the best Lewis structure lah So we can consider this one bila ada semua single bond ada sigma lah So normally dia akan tanya how many sigma bonds here? So ada ada enam How many sigma and pi bond here? You have four sigma and one pi bond Sebab ada double bond kan? And then ni ada triple bond How many sigma? For this uh, molecule we have two sigma with two pi So kita tahu bila ada 2 pi okey ni ada triple bond. Kalau ada satu pi dia ada double bond. Kalau ni tak ada langsung ah tak adalah tak ada double atau triple bond. Okey. Boleh eh? Clear eh? Okey, saya stop sampai sini sebab kelas kita sejam je kan. So uh, by the way nanti saya akan discuss balik dengan uh, you all punya apa? Uh, <coughs> apa class wrap lah untuk uh, another one hour class. Kalau tak dapat nak buat minggu ni, kita buat minggu depan. Tengok macam mana lah eh. Okay. Any question so far sebelum saya tutup kita punya session today? No, no, no. Eh? Okay. By the hmm. way, saya lupa uh, sepatutnya polarity tadi saya nak tunjuk uh, simulation. Tapi kan saya ada bagi link simulation yang Fat Colorado tu. You boleh try je lah kat situ untuk polarity. Uh, you boleh play around, okay. Uh, uh, dekat dalam fat simulation tu eh. Saya lupa tadi nak tunjuk. Okay so with that I end our session today with uh, Tasbih Kifaro and Surah Tulang. Okay thank you everyone. Thank you madam. Thank you madam. Uh, thank you madam. Okay. Thank you madam. Thank you madam. Thank you madam. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam.